Hi, this is Linda once again. I'm also known as Miss Preacher. And this video is going to be a collation of several video clips and photos to support a dream that I had and shared with uh, Pastor Paul Bagley. And just to bring you up to date on the research I've been doing. I've mentioned in the past that the Lord has put me on a path where it seems like I just can't get enough of researching what is going on in the world versus what's happening uh, in the Bible and um, how things in the Bible are, are coming to pass so rapidly and different things that are just changing in our face overnight. It seems like day after day after day, major events are just falling into place, just like the Bible said. So I'd like you to just take your time and look at this video when you really have time to absorb everything that I'm going to share, because I think it will uh, put in perspective previous things that I have shared with you. Um, I'm the type of person that I believe in going where the information is. And if that's in the streets, then I'm going to go to the streets and get the information. Uh, and I believe that one credible source uh, is a person who has been involved in the um, movement to bring about freedom for black Americans and his name is Dick Gregory and he clearly has the inside scoop on what's going on so I'm going to bring you a clip of what he shared with the particular audience then I'm going to go into the spiritual and share with you a portion of the Jim Baker show where prophetess Glenda Jackson is confirming what Dick Gregory brought up in part. Then I'm going to share a dream I had. And then I'm going to back that up with a video clip from a man of God who will tie it all together. In the middle of that, I'm going to share um, some information that a Mr. Jeff Morton shared in one of his videos that should surely open your eyes. And by the end of this video, if this doesn't wake you up, I don't know what will. Now, most of you know me. I'm very excited and bubbly and jubilant. and I love to praise the Lord and everything. But for this video, I'm doing everything I can just to keep myself calm, to really be real. <laughs> because this isn't a nonchalant type topic. This is deadly serious. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit will move upon all who hear this video and watch it to the end for for change that will be eternal. 
once it's over, I'll come back and I'll tie all the pieces together and end this video. But for right now, let's get into the clip from Mr. Gregory. This is Smart Media News, current up to date global Smart Media News. NSA sonic wave weapons. That's the national security. Uh, that's what they use in, in first. NSA sonic wave weapons used for multiple hard fire. Oh, you're sure. Ah, you didn't feel nothing. Ah. NSA sonic wave weapons used for multiple hard fire. Because they got worse than we got, but they wouldn't use it on the Jews. And you sit here and you don't feel nothing, and you're just about to get it. Just about to get it. Here's an idea. What you saw in Baltimore wasn't for you, it was for the world. They saw that, they thought the church was burning. Huh? They thought they was gangbanging and they had to call in the National Guard. They had to put up a curfew. That upset my people. You couldn't go to the gambling casino. <laughs> but that looks good around the world. I'll tell you what they're fixing to do. It might happen this weekend. The word is that it surely happened before July. So, then right behind that, the train. And everybody in the world knows something in the train, except you. Then right after that, the bikers. Now that bikers killed, they don't have to give the police. So now all they got to do now, and they say that, that those bikers, most of them, is ex marines They got to check ex off. They ain't marines They still work. Huh? They said they'll go to 20 cities across this country, and they couldn't do it on the holiday. And go up five police stations, and all you're going to see is dead police. And that's when they declare martial law. And nobody will get upset because you say, oh, he had no choice. Huh? Ain't nothing good to come out of the Obama will be the president. Won't be no elections. Spend <laughs> huh? the Constitution? Martial law? All right, now, in case that video was a little hard for you to understand, Mr. Gregory did a different interview and repeated the same thing, and it is much clearer in this next clip. Where we are uh, today, and it's going to get real messy because people are saying we could be in martial law by July. Okay? Wow. Now, what do that mean? That means the president... Obama would would declare national emergency, suspend the Senate and the Congress, and push the Constitution out the way, and he stays president to further notice. Huh? Uh -huh. Okay, that's what this is about. That's how serious this is, huh? That's how serious this is, he said. Yet. I don't hear major ministries on television saying anything about this. I don't hear major ministries on television warning the people, telling the people to get prepared. I, I know the whole setup. You know, you have Tuesday night or Wednesday night Bible study. And that's when you talk to the people who really are the quote unquote real members. But the thing about that is, is on TV, you get donations from people all over the world. So if they're uh, pouring into your ministry, shouldn't you be pouring into them? Shouldn't they know? hey, something bad is getting ready to happen and I don't want you to be left out in the cold. So get up and prepare now. But you don't hear that. I'm going to give you some homework. If you will read Romans 13 and then just ask the Lord 
if he intends for you to obey corrupt authority and you have peace doing that, be led by the Spirit of God. And while you read Romans chapter 13, be prayerful and let the Lord lead you. And I'm going to ask you to do your own research because this is a very important point. Now I'm going to move into the next clip by Prophetess Glenda Jackson. God spoke to you about a coming election. Yes. It was startling. And so you can just take your time now and, and relax. <laughs> oh, <okay>. Because it's... <laughs> But I'm not sure I should put this over television because I'm afraid people will hate us for telling the truth. The truth does cause people to it wear does. out sometimes. It causes persecution. The truth does. But the truth is the only thing that's going to make people free. So this was back in 2007 that the, the word first came to you. And what was that word? I had a vision and I saw this man and I never I never knew this man never seen him in my life and I said who is this Lord and he said your next president and he gave me his name and many of the uh, are supposedly supposed to be God's people voted for him well you're supposed to know who labors among you that means even in the White House Mm -hmm. and uh, he told me he's going to win two terms and uh, I was telling Sid Roth and he said I just don't believe he's going to get in a second term and Ralph uh, Wilkerson told me the same thing and I go why and they said because all the major prophets the big prophets have prophesied the other guy is coming in mm -hmm. and I said well I haven't been talking to Mickey Mouse I talked to God mm -hmm. and I said I don't care and I'm not putting them down and when the election come we know who won so and the third so time, people were even arguing with you that, yes that our president would be would not be reelected yes and I most have, people really in the Christian circle thought he would not be reelected did yeah. not at that point. But and you were I told saw. like years before he would serve two terms. That's right. So you were stubborn, right? No, right. faith. That's faith. Yeah. Right? Stubborn faith. faith. <laughs> like a bulldog. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I even had one, I, I won't mention no names, he called me and he said, uh, he just hollered at me and said, you're wrong like that. And uh, I said, well, Brother, if you don't believe me, why don't you pray about it? And, uh, but Obama won. And it was like he came out of nowhere. You know, he just appeared out of nowhere. And then God told me, I, I showed me another vision. I seen in the White House, it was like I was there all at once watching it. And I saw some Muslim men speaking to him, and he was saying, I got to stay in the White House. It's my destiny. He just was speaking that way. And they said, well, how do you get to stay? And he said, uh, martial law. And they said, we know how to stir the trouble up. So they said, we'll go out and you decree the martial law. Two weeks ago, he decreed it. Anybody see it? It was in Baltimore. I went to Baltimore before it ever happened. I prophesied in their church that the Muslims were going to stir their youth up to fight against authority, to go against the law, shooting one another. But it was going to be the Muslims do it. And it was going to intensify. And they were going to go from state to state to state. And that's how it's been. 
Watch, it'll be in another state. That many cops don't shoot that many kids and that many kids get mad at cops. It's never happened before. And people can't see it's the undercover work of the devil behind it. And so Obama came out and de said martial uh, law. And, and the reason they're going to do it this way, God said, first of all, it's going to last till 216. They're going to keep doing it. So it'll be in force when the election. And then number two, people are going to accept it because they're going to feel safe. Well, this will keep riots down. This will keep, you know, and we feel safer if the martial law is here with us. But that's not uh, to make you safe or anything. That is the undercover work, sneaky work of the devil mm -hmm. and his men. I had a pastor tell me that in Southern California, he said, he had been fasting and praying, and God says, don't fear the homosexuals. Fear the Muslims. They're what's coming in, going to move in, and it's going to turn America upside down. Because yeah. what they want to do, and God showed me in another vision, they were in the White House talking, and our president, how they go and take over nations, they bring the economy down to nothing. So you depend on them. Glenda, what happened in Baltimore martial law is a, is a pretty interesting thing. But don't you think that martial law is going to become a lot bigger than that? Oh, I mean, do you yeah. see martial law extending through large regions of the United States? Yes, it's going to uh, intensify until it just takes over the entire America. Wow. That's what it's going to do. The, the, if the grid goes down, they will declare martial law. Do you hear me? Yes. Yes. I so just remember, if the if the enemies, they have to declare it because they're trying to keep. Otherwise, they're going to kill everybody. I mean, they're going to kill everybody anyway, and they're going to eat each other. They're going to kill each other. They're going to steal food. It'll be such hell on earth that they will declare martial law. So I think, you know, God gave you a little insight, not a little, a big insight, perhaps, of what's coming. That's one way martial law has always brought down the economy. And people don't realize when it's in a country and it starts going big, the economy falls. Wow. One day you may get up, and I, I really believe this. And go to the bank and your money will not be there. That's right. You won't be able to touch it. And with martial law, they can tell you whether you can go across the street or not. They can tell you whether you can go out of your house or That's not. Right. You have the zones you can go to. Mm -hmm. And then they come to your house and just bear with, follow me, camera, when I'm getting, I'm uh, moving up. They come into your house and they say, we want this. We want this. This is all to the government now. This all belongs to the government. We're going to share with everybody. You worked your whole life. And then they get to the point where they say, well, we're, we're going to, uh, we're bringing some people into your house. They're going to move in with you. No, you can't do that. Yes, we can. It's martial law. You think huh. martial law sounds nice, don't you? Martial law sounds like the martial is going to take care of us. No, what it basically means, you have lost all control of your own life. Most people don't want to hear anybody talk what we're t talking about today. The um, typical American Christian has no idea of truth. 
no idea what's really going on in America. I think you're getting an idea because they're finally showing themselves. The Bible has told us all the things that are going to happen, how they're going to happen, what's going to happen, and it's all there. But instead of studying that, instead of studying the Word of God, instead of going with almost magnifying glasses and, and reading it and studying it, finding every word of the Revelation, every word of Ezekiel, every word of Daniel, every word of the Psalms. The Psalms are great prophetic <laughs> Psalms as well. If we would study every word of it, we would have the road map to what's going on. We would have the answers to what to do, how to prepare, what what's going on, what's going to happen. I mean, we just take Matthew 24 as one of the last messages Jesus re gave to his disciples when they said, what is the sign of the end of the world and you're coming back? And he says, here's what, when you see these things, wh 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 why is why is your church not teaching that? Why aren't we looking to see every sign so that we can prepare for the king? He's coming back. Amen. Amen. We're in the now time. The king is coming. Amen. The king is coming. That's right. Mm. Wow. Wow. Zach, you want to take it over? This has been awesome. What? what this what? has been great. I mean, that's all we can do. You know, it's like, we don't know what's going on. We don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear any, any bad news. We don't want to hear. And so we cut out all of it. And yet, the thing that makes me know there's a God, there's a God who's coming again, there is a God who is all true, there's a God who created the heavens and the earth, yes. there's a God who has written the Bible from cover to cover. I have no doubt because everything he wrote has come to pass. Yes. Every prophecy about Jesus Christ as Son of God has come true. Yes. That's right. Wow. I thought that was a powerful episode uh, of the Jim Baker show. And um, I, there's no way I could have explained it better. And so this is a lengthy video, but just hang in there because... I've got some more powerful information for you to consider. I recently stumbled across a YouTube channel um, and the guy's name is Jeff Morton and he allowed me to add his clip to this video. It's gonna blow you away. Here's Mr. Morton. The one thing that is consistently represented through this presidency is division, okay? Uh, we see that happening in just about everything. Uh, disarming our military, uh, bankrupting the nation, you know, all these stimuluses that didn't work, all these people that got rich uh, off of your money. And the borders, we have no southern border right now. Israel has no southern border. They're fighting to keep terrorists from coming over. God says, hey, what you guys do to my country, I'm going to do to you. You want to allow this stuff to keep happening in my southern border? I'm destroying your southern border. That's the way God does it. Uh, in this book right here by Bill Koenig, he chronicles this. And I understand this. It's like the king saying, okay, you want to mess with my country? I'm going to mess with your country. That's how God is. He proved that with Katrina, for me anyway. And he proved that with the tsunami that um, happened in uh, in uh, Japan. And, Folks, you might not know this, but Japan went before the United Nations and cried bloody murder because Israel was building 
neighborhoods in East Jerusalem. They had a problem with that. So they went to the Palestinians on um, October 11th and said, here, we're going to give you a bunch of money to rebuild Jericho. Okay? So here's two, two, two things. They're coming after Israel for building neighborhoods. Okay? For building in their country. Japan had a problem with that. So they go help the Palestinians build up Jericho. Well, we all know the, the prophets of Joshua said, whoever rebuilds the city is cursed. Then, a year later, from the day that they went to the United Nations, uh, March 11th, 2010, a year later on the Gregorian calendar, March 11, 11, the earthquake tsunami. Okay. The same kind of thing is getting ready to happen in the United States of America. Okay. Uh, now, when the brother mentioned Jericho, in the Amplified Bible, um, chapter 6, verse 26, the word says, Cursed is the man before the Lord who rises up and rebuilds this city, Jericho. With the loss of his firstborn shall he lay its foundation. And with the loss of his youngest son, shall he set up its gates. Now, in 1 Kings chapter 16, verse 34, we learn that Hael, the Bethelite, built Jericho. He laid its foundations at the cost of the life of Abiram, his firstborn, and set up its gates with the loss of his youngest son, Sagab, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake through Joshua, son of Nun. Now that's serious stuff. We know that the word also teaches us that Whoever blesses Israel will be blessed. And whoever curses Israel will be cursed. And so for Japan to do what our brother just informed us about, now I understand what is going on with Japan. I I mean, after about the fifth or sixth, 6 6.0 and above earthquake, after the tsunami, I was like, Lord, I don't know what Japan did, but they are definitely, it's something going on. It's a curse on them, man. They, they the whole island, better repent and turn to Jesus Christ because something is going on. I had no idea of this. So, it only supports my belief that whatever is going on in Washington, whoever is pulling the strings and saying, you know, we're going to betray Israel. We're not going to be there for them like we've always been in the past. Whoever is pushing that agenda, I believe, now this is just my opinion. God has not told me this, but it's my opinion, but I believe that what you have set up for Israel, God is going to turn around and he's going to do it to you. And I sat back and I did a lot of research on Jade Helm 15. And I could see that all these places that you're getting all these things ready to be set up to possibly use against your own American people. I see 
a turnaround where you will actually be in the position of having to fight off people who are coming to attack this country. So where in your mind, you think you're doing it for one, one reason. I really, really can see God turning it around and he's going to put people in, in place to protect his people. And we're going to still be here, church. We're going to still be here, body of Christ, to go through some of this stuff. Now, again, I think I've said it, you know, in other videos, but I have to say it in this one. I do not know the time or, or hour that Jesus is going to return. Ain't no way I'm going to sit up here and date set. If the father told Jesus that he, he can't find out until he tells him, who am I? So, no, I'm not trying to date set. But I am trying to tell you, you better get a grip <laughs> and get on the good foot as far as preparing something for yourself because things are getting ready to get crazy. And now I'm going to share the dream that God gave me and you'll see how all of this kind of ties in together. Here we go. Uh, area code 267, are you there? Go. Hi, Pastor Paul. Hey, this sounds like Miss Preacher. Yes, it is. How you doing? You know what? I am blessed and highly favored. How are you doing? I'm the same. <laughs> Listen, I wanted to share this dream that I had with you. <clears throat> um, I've had it a long, well, not a, well, I, I would say within this year. Okay. Uh, but I held on to it. I didn't post it on my uh, YouTube page or anything. I just held on to it. And um, the Lord has taught me to listen and, you know, just look at other people, just, you know, just to wait, you know. And I feel like right. I'm able to release it now. Okay. And um, basically what I saw, it was it was like I was there, but I don't think anybody saw me. But uh, you know the area where uh, uh, the president walks down this little corridor that seems to be outside, yeah, going down like, to his office. There's like well, columns. I, the, I, columns on the, there's like yes, little, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. Go right in. Okay. Well, I dreamt that President Obama was walking down this corridor, but the White House. I got the impression that it was burned down. Oh. The columns weren't there, and that overhead thing wasn't there. And on his right, by the building, it was like ruins. And uh, But there were steps. And I don't know if it's steps where that part is or not, but the thing about these steps in the dream was that uh, I got the impression that the people who had built those steps and had built the White House, I didn't see people who were black or white. I just got this image of a group of people standing right. down on the ground, and they were looking at the building, and the impression I got was it was just, it was, I felt like they were representative of the American people. <laughs> I felt like they were uh, looking like, you know, all of our blood, sweat, and tears went into building this great house. And it was just like, these, this was more of an impression than me. They didn't say anything or anything like this, but this was just the impression I got. It was just like they were, like, stunned. Like, like they would never have appeared if it hadn't been such a great, great tragedy. I see. And, so they uh, were, let me ask you a question. So they uh -huh. were there. They, in other words, the, the impression you're getting in the stream was they were all there because of some great tragedy that had happened. And they would look, you know, it's almost like if you, if a building gets on fire and all the neighbors come out to watch. Yes. But it wasn't okay. like they were there to watch. It was like, it was like they were looking at the aftermath. Right. Because the it, building, it was, I didn't see flames. I didn't see smoke. But right. what I did see was the president was just running back and forth on this little uh, path. 
on that corridor. And as he's going, like, towards his office, I'm coming behind him, and I'm trying to say, you know, Mr. President, you know, I mean, we're in trouble. Mr. President, right. can't you see that the building is, you know, torn down or gone down or, you know, and it was just like he wasn't listening to me at all. You know, he was just in this, you know, he was focused. It was like he was frantic, but it, he wasn't, it was just like he's going back and forth. It wasn't like he was pacing back and forth. Right. It was like he was, it was just like this uh, idle he, busyness. He was busy. That's what it was trying like to say. he just, pardon he's me? Busy. It's like, that's exactly the word I was going to use. It's like he's running back and forth, but he's busy. He wasn't in a panic. He wasn't in a, a state of alarm. He was just right, idle. It was just like he's just so. Ca- it's just like um, somebody who is just in their head, super intelligent, doing all this busy work, but it wasn't doing anything. It wasn't helping. Yes. And it, and I was like behind him, saying, you know, more or less like, hey, you know, can't you see what you know? But it was like I wasn't there, or like he didn't. He ignored me. He didn't hear me. Right. And um, that was the end of the dream. Now, the reason why I shared this is because I have I've just been listening to some people. I don't listen to everybody, but um, just in my heart, Pastor, I I am telling you, I don't know when and I don't know where, but I, as we all know, we're in trouble. But something is getting ready to happen. Yeah. The other, I, I also had another dream. I cannot tell you really what happened in the stream, but I kept seeing these equations, and it was like these numbers, one added up to 11, and these other numbers added up to 9. And long story short, I got the impression that while everybody was looking for 9-11 for something to happen, it was like in this this dream, I got the impression that they're going to switch up on us. Go Look 11-9. Right. November the 9th. Right. So I don't know, and I'm not saying, you know, but I'm just telling you that, you know, now I have a lot of stupid dreams, but these are the <laughs> only two. <laughs> these are the You're only the two only that I really took heed to, and I really. And then the last thing uh, I wanted to say on my part is that I, I'm begging everybody, please. Keep a tab on hatred in your heart. Obama, his mama, nobody is worth going to hell for. This is something that God has been dealing with me about. We hear all this stuff, and some true, some not true. But a lot of people hate Obama, and I understand it. But when you stand before God, you're going to be held accountable for the hate in your heart. So right. whatever he does or anybody else in your family or around you, you got to stay on, Lord, I forgive them. Lord, I forgive Amen. them. Father, in the name of Jesus, remove this hatred in my heart. That I'm telling you what he's telling me for me to do. Right. Okay, and, right. and that's for the body because when he comes, you don't want to find yourself left behind why? Because of that stupid hatred in your heart. So we don't even want that. You got to keep a tab on that. Then, last but not least, I'm posting a YouTube video from um, this guy named Doctor. Uh, he's a pastor. He's the guy that wears the orange sh- shirt. Uh, he's uh, from India, I believe, and I think his name is Sal the Judge or something like that. Uh, check him out. Uh, because he is also talking about uh, what God has shown him regarding um, America and uh, President Obama. He said that he's going to go down and his palace will burn. Ooh, and, and that you is this sort dream, of his name. Pardon me? And you had this dream of is this yes, the that's way what, it that's what, down. Yes, sir. That's what... Uh, more or less, it was like the final confirmation that allowed me to release what I saw. Right. Because I, wow. I feel like a lot of times people are saying things, and, and people clearly don't understand that when you speak a word, if it's a negative word or if it's a positive word, it is a prayer. 
And if you can pray negatively and the devil comes to pick up those words, or you can pray positively, okay? And so you have to really be careful. You're and right. so it's a situation where, you know, a lot of times I feel like people are, it's like they want America to be destroyed. <laughs> yeah, That's and you not know, the case that, for me. It's not the case for me at all. As a matter of fact, that was what the Lord gave me this morning was a word that, yes, America can change it. It can change. And that a great But we have to pray. We have to pray and we have to we have to pray hard. And we gotta keep praying, as you said. And we gotta pray positively, as you said. You can't exactly. pray negatively. If you pray against people, that don't work actually. It that is actually you're 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 getting close to witchcraft. You when you pray, you must pray positive. You must ask God's will to be done. You must pray for deliverance. You know what I'm saying? You understand yes. it. And a lot of folks don't. They they pray. They get angry and they pray. God, do this, move this, remove that. You look. You don't tell God what to do. You ask God. And you pray to God and you plead it and you stand on His word and He will perform it. So, I love the dream you had. It's very powerful. And I am going to check out this guy that you're talking about, Smith Preacher. Thank you so much. Good to hear from you. You sound good. To hear good from to you. Hear. And I'm posting. I'm posting that a link to the his. He's he's a Sadhu Salvor Judge. I'm. I know I'm messing it up, but I'm posting the link in the chat room now. Uh, he's the guy that wears that orange robe. He's got long gray hair, and he is generally very accurate. God bless you so much. God so bless much. you. Keep going. Amen. Amen. I love I, you, all We love you, Miss Preacha. You know something? I, uh, I'm i really moved by her dream uh, because when she's telling it, I can see it. I see the president actually back and forth, but he's not panicking. He wasn't running like, oh, my Lord, look what's happened. He wasn't addressing the people. He was like he was working so hard. He was so busy at what he was doing, but all that work he was doing, isn't the issue. I mean, it wasn't the big, the big issue. So, you know what? Just keep praying for him and pray for America and pray for this nation. Pray indeed. We really do need to pray for our nation. We need to pray for President Obama and his family. We need to pray for all the people that are in government. We need to pray. We need to hope that they will repent just to be honest though is it, it feels like you're hoping against hope but we need to pray and know that god can intervene i'm gonna play uh this final clip um from mr salvor salvor judge and hopefully um that'll be it and you will get the full picture of what's in my heart and it may help you to focus your prayers at any rate i appreciate your time i love you in the lord and please please get ready please prepare please Take the focus off of you. Put the focus on God so that you can hear him and you can get ready. Jesus is coming back soon. The kingdom of God in you needs to come alive so that we can work together and make it as smooth a transition for as many as possible as we can. Thank you and God bless. On 6 December 2011, at 12.45 p.m., I was called by the Lord to come and meet him. This was during the conference that was going on. 
So I stole myself away from the conference and went to my room. And as I entered into my room, I saw two mighty angels standing there. And they beckoned me to go to the balcony. He said, the Lord is standing there. Go and meet him there. So I went to the balcony. And I saw the Lord Jesus Christ standing very regally. And he beckoned me, come and stand beside me. And when I stood, he said, look at my beautiful city. So I looked around. From the hotel, you know, high rise, you can see the nice, beautiful city. As I was watching, suddenly, there was a huge explosion. A bomb drop and a building exploded. Another bomb drop, another building exploded. The whole city was gone up in smoke. War planes were flying here and there. And the Lord Jesus said, My city will suffer the pain of war. Then the angels were standing by, they said, in the war, Israel will put up steep fight amidst heavy losses. A political trap will be laid for the city to be captured. And Israel's best friend will betray her. Israel has only one best friend. And her best friend will betray her. You know, if you have ever read Shakespeare's plays, one of the plays is Julius Caesar. And Julius Caesar had a best friend called Brutus. Towards the end of the play, the ministers will concord a plan to assassinate Julius Caesar. And somehow, they will bribe Brutus to be part of their company of assassination. And Brutus and Julius Caesar were the best and the thick of friends. And Julius Caesar trusted his life in Brutus' hands. When all these other guys came and stabbed Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar was still standing boldly and fighting, you know. And then finally Brutus came and he laid his dagger into Brutus, uh, Julius Caesar's flesh. And Julius turned around and said, you too, Brutus. And he dropped dead. What killed Julius Caesar was not the stabbing from all these other guys, but the fatal wound from his best friend. Fatal wound the betrayal by his best friend totally killed him. If not a mighty man of Julius Caesar cannot die like that. But the betrayal by his best friend totally broke his heart to pieces. In the same manner, the political trap that will be laid for Israel, her best friend will lay that trap. And she will be betrayed by her best friend. Then, the son of perdition, her best friend, will come to offer peace. Land for peace deal. This happened once in history. After the Six-Day War, the UN Security Council passed a resolution 242 made on November 22, 1967, a land for peace agreement. When this will be done, very soon, Daniel chapter 9 verse 27 will be fulfilled. It will be fulfilled in the war. Then the angels who were standing by said to me, Even now, the son of perdition is making plans with the beasts for this to happen. UN 
will gather the nations to force Israel to divide Jerusalem. This has been prophesied in Amos chapter 7 verse 17. You know, when, when this word was spoken to me, in a vision I saw the Israeli Prime Minister desperately hoping and trusting their best friend will stand by their side to help them. He'll be so helpless. He's, he'll be like in a cornered position, not knowing what to do. He can't stand up and declare that Jerusalem cannot be divided anymore. He's so helpless. In the midst of the helplessness, the best friend comes with a political trap. And the Israeli Prime Minister will trust their best friend and accede to that demand, not knowing that it was a trap. Now, what will be the aftermath of dividing Jerusalem? It will be divided. What will be the aftermath? Great earthquakes will take place in many, many places around the world, especially in the nations that will be involved in creating, conniving this plan to divide Jerusalem. It will be followed by great tidal waves of tsunami coming to cause great devastation. You know, when these words were spoken, prior to the prophetic conference that we conducted in uh, Egypt near Mount Sinai last December, I was fasting for three days up on the mountain prior to the conference. And one morning, I was sitting by a rock, sipping a cup of tea and meditating the word of God. And suddenly, I saw an open vision. Right before my eyes, I saw a mighty angel with a long drawn sword in his hand. And he stood before me speaking all these words and then he said this is what will happen to the best friend that will betray Israel and divide Jerusalem when he spoke those words I saw this map of US like in a three dimensional you know it appeared right before my eyes beside the angel and he took the sword and pierced right into the heart of US and cut into two. He said, likewise will this nation be divided as Jerusalem will be divided. Cut the land into two. Exactly in the center. 